Good morning. Today I want to show you how it is to live inside the boat during the winter. We are here in Alaska and most of the winter we anchor out in the wilderness. So let's go inside. Let's start from under the dodger because this is part of our living space here. We have nice reindeer pelts to sit on, some of our shoes and so on, our crocs that we use to walk around on the deck when there's not too much snow. And we also sometimes store things like PFDs, life vests and so on in here. And this thing here comes down and it zips shut. So the space in here remains mostly dry. We do have a small problem with the condensation though. The ceiling is just aluminum and there's a lot of condensation forming here. We should install some kind of liner. So as you can see, we have snow piling up outside. And here we have our fridge or our second fridge. This is where we store some of our perishables in the winter because it's nice and cool. Uh, but I think that's pretty much about it. Let's go inside. So I am now sitting on the companion way stairs. I have obviously come into the boat through this hatch that's behind me. This hatch is completely watertight. It can be latched shut. So it's a little bit different than on most sailboats. We really like this one. And this is now the main area of the boat. This is where everything happens. Usually we have even more light in here because there's a lot of windows. But right now, unfortunately, it just started snowing pretty hard and the windows are getting snowed shut. Behind me is our big seating area. We have settees on both sides and those we also use as pilot berths when we are underway. And this area it can seat 10 to 12 people, which honestly is almost too much for us because normally it's just me and Sophie, it's normally just the two of us. But it's a good party space. The table is very big when you fold it out and under the table is the engine. When you lift the table up, the whole engine is completely exposed and you have really good access to the engine. Then in front of the settee on the port side of the boat is the navigation table and the navigation area. There's also the heater and our drying area opposite of the navigation table on the starboard side is the galley which is quite nice. Anyway, let's look at some of the specifics now and some of the more interesting things. Okay, so let's start with Sohvi's special area here on the starboard side of the boat. I'll let her introduce that. Hello. Uh, yeah, this is my space. This is where I, I hang out most of the time. This is where I work and, and do basically everything. Um, it's a little bit lower, so it's a little bit colder here, but otherwise it's it's really nice. Here we have all of my books, or our books. And um, well, here is the diesel day tank, uh, which we designed. We still have some uh, some Christmas decorations since, it, since it's still uh, winter time. And this is, yeah, this is an integral part of my life nowadays. It's a hot water bottle. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah, so the holy trinity to keeping your feet warm on the boat. Number one, the hot water bottle. You can put it at your feet and uh, we use this all the time, literally. Highly recommended. Uh, much cheaper than floor heating. And then uh, woolen socks. I'm wearing two pairs right now on top of each other. And well, I have down pants on as well, so I guess that helps too. And then this carpeting here is amazing. So this is modified IKEA carpet that Sohvi made. And it is pretty thick. Uh, so it insulates the floor at least somewhat. And the good thing is that it also protects the teak. Because especially in winter, if we are sailing, we might walk around here with wet boots and so. So it's nice for keeping the teak in better condition. And this carpeting we have all around the boat, all the hallways, all the areas except for the heads. 
Okay, so let's look at the other side of the seating area. Back there we have most of my camera gear in this black bag and some storage there. And then this spot here I call the wire chaos of hell. Um, uh, it's just unfinished, but it's so low down the priority list of things to do that um, it's probably gonna stay like this for a while. Now if we go further forward we have more wire chaos there. But here is kind of like my area. If that back there was Sophie's area, then this here is mine. So obviously when you are on a boat, you are very limited on space. And we would probably prefer to have at least one kind of like an office room. So when we are actually working and concentrating, you could go there and have some peace. But we don't really have that right now. So this is my area usually. It's quite a bit more messy. I have all kinds of camera gear here on the table and so on. And it's just a basic navigation table really. Um, one thing that I want to point out is that the storage space underneath the navigation table is some of the most useless space on a boat, I find. Because we don't really have that many um, traditional charts. And even if we do, we don't really use them that often. And uh, I can't really store anything underneath here because there's always something on the table so you can't access any of the stuff underneath here. Sitting here though has its advantages and the main advantage is that I'm on the same level as the diesel stove. So this area is a little bit warmer than where Sophie is usually sitting. So let's have a look at the stove and the drying area next. So this is our heater, obviously it's a diesel stove and if we take the fan off then we can also heat up water there and that's where we heat up all of our water pretty much. Also for showers and for the hot water bottles and for coffee and for everything like that. And here is where we also dry most of our stuff. So we have the glove drying area there and then over here behind this screen it's made so that you can hang stuff on the other side and you don't have to be afraid of the stuff um, falling down on top of the stove and um, catching flames. This heater gives out most of its heat actually through the chimney so the chimney can be very hot and it gets really warm close to the ceiling. And so these fans here distribute the heat. Those are thermoelectric fans, so they don't need any electricity. They make electricity basically with a temperature difference. Then the galley. This is pretty basic arrangement, normal arrangement here. Uh, not that much to say about it. We do have a temporary fridge here because the original fridge is not working or we basically ripped it out. This one is a really small portable fridge, but it actually works pretty well for us. We find that we don't really need that much fridge space. We have our collection of some of the most used things here. Basically our whole diet there. Instant coffee, popcorn and sourdough starter. Uh, we eat a lot of popcorn and I also just recently started drinking coffee and since I learned how to drink coffee from Sohvi, then um, the only coffee that I drink is instant coffee because yeah, somehow she only drinks instant coffee when she's at the boat. Some of the items worth mentioning here are of course the Fiskars scissors from Finland, Finnish design. The best scissors in the world or at least that's what we think. Then we have Finnish design um, print here for the, what do you call them, these gloves, whatever. And then some of the things that we are really struggling with in America is we can't find these anywhere so we have to bring them from Finland or go to an Ikea to buy one. So obviously dishwashing brush, a must have for any Finnish flagged boat. Here are some of our storage and I want to show you that it's quite cold here close to the floor because as you can see the olive oil has turned somewhat solid. 
That's how we also don't need really need a fridge because the whole boat is a fridge. Some of the other things that are maybe worth mentioning here are our fire <laughs> fire extinguishers. We take like fire protection pretty seriously because fire is one of the biggest dangers to a leisure boat. So we have different types of fire extinguishers all around the boat. One thing that we have here in the main area is some bright lighting. A lot of people are installing indirect lighting and lighting that looks nice. We are mainly concerned with just having lighting that's really bright because in the winter it's just so dark outside and we want to have some light if we need to do some maintenance or boat work and so on. So we have bright lights and one nice thing about these lights is that when you turn it off and wait over three seconds, you need to wait at least three seconds and then you turn it on, it's a red light. So now this light is good if you are sailing and you want to keep your night vision. You have both red and white light on the same switch and you don't need to do any additional wiring. And the other thing that I wanted to mention is our chart here. So this chart here is pretty much the only traditional chart that we have or a traditional map that we have. And it kind of shows the areas of the world that we are interested in. So now let's head forward down into the hallway and look at the cabins and the heads. The reason that this space is so narrow is of course that here on the, at the center of the boat, this whole space here is filled by the centerboard boat. So we have the retractable centerboard, the centerboard swings up and the centerboard comes inside this box here and that takes up some space inside the boat. And what also takes space inside the boat is that here when I'm not in the hallway yet, I'm standing on top of the diesel and water tanks. So there's a little bit over 100 gallons or 400 liters of both diesel and water underneath me. And when you step down into the hallway, that space there is actually taken by the ballast. So you can't have the floorboards further down. So I'm a little bit over six feet and starting from here to the bow of the boat there's only a few spots where I can stand upright and the hallway is not one of them. So let's take a look at these um, doors here. So the first one here on the left is the heads. Then the second one is our clothes storage. The third one there is a pretty big um, storage space and then on the starboard side we have kind of like the captain's cabin here or the crew cabin and then at the bow is kind of like the owner's cabin which is just a slightly bigger than the starboard side cabin. Anyway let's take a look at the heads first. So this heads compartment is pretty basic nothing really that special here. We have taken the old toilet out and replaced it with an airhead desiccating separating toilet, so we don't need through hulls for that. If you've seen some of my older videos, you might know that we only have one through hull for the entire boat and all of the all of the gray water gets pumped overboard above the waterline. We have started converting this space into a shower, but it is not done yet. The shower pan is there, but the whole project is still unfinished and I'm not really sure when we are going to finish it. So when I told you that we warm up our shower water on the diesel stove, um, that means that we are kind of like taking bucket showers right now and we do so under the dodger in the cockpit. So then the second door on the port side is our clothes storage space. It used to be a shower, but we simply took the shower head out and declared it to be a storage space. It's that simple. It was just wasted space. There was too much room for both the heads and shower, you know, taking like half of the boat. We couldn't afford that. So now we have our clothes here. Winter clothes, sailing clothes, down jackets, whatever. Then let's go and open this door here. This is storage. So we have 
mechanical and technical things in here. It's quite full right now. There's some things I need to install and they are stored over there. And we just have quite a bit of stuff. And I have to say that to kind of preface what's coming. So the thing is for us that we do a lot of things, you know, we ski, I wing foil, you know, I surf, we cross country ski, we back country ski, we go stand up paddle boarding and so on. So it turns out we end up with quite a lot of stuff and that's a problem when you live on a boat. If we only went jogging, we wouldn't have an issue with the amount of space. We don't really have an issue right now either, but um, we just end up having quite a lot of items in the boat and I'm gonna show you now. So here the starboard side cabin is now a dedicated storage space, kind of, and you can see we have a couple of pairs of cross country skis, we have back country skis, we have soft split board, some ski boots, avalanche backpacks, sleeping bag, a couple of fishing rods and so on. And this is actually quite a large cabin. If we do have visitors, we can actually make all of this disappear. So it goes under the bed and the skis can go on the side of the cabin inside the ski bags here. The reason we have it like this is because we still want to have two sleeping cabins so that we can have friends and family come over. Otherwise, we would probably convert the bow cabin into just a storage cabin and have our ski gear and so on in there. But uh, for now, this is what it's like and it's just because we like to do a lot of different kinds of things. Let's go and take a look at the bow cabin now. This is where we sleep. So here in the bow cabin on this side, on the port side, there's a small seat and a bunch of uh, storage here. So there's some hanging lockers in there and then on the starboard side there is a seat and a small table here. We originally thought that here at the bow of the boat you know one of us could sit on this table here and work here in peace but the reality is that now in the winter this space is not really heated so it gets a little bit too cold here to be just sitting. It's really just fine for sleeping. We prefer to sleep in colder temperatures anyway. But for just sitting still and not being under the down blanket, which is by the way one of the really like kind of like the bigger investments that we have here in the boat, but really um, worth its weight in gold almost. So for sleeping under that, everything is fine, but just for working, it's a little bit too cool. We might install some heating here or uh, might install some radiators here. We can have radiators plugged into the diesel stove, but for now it's kind of just storage space underneath here and so on. In any case, I will also make a technical tour video later where I'll go into all of the technical things about the boat. I will do that later and if I've already done so, if you watch, if you are watching this at a later point in time, uh, I will link the video somewhere here. I think that concludes the tour. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye bye.